with the sixth pick in the draft, the Detroit Red Wings select from Mannheim of the DEL, Moritz Seider. You can hear the reaction here in this arena. Reactions like this are more common in the NHL than you think. Almost everyone remembers the iconic reaction to the Kotkaniemi pick. And this very well may be the case for Kotkaniemi as well because I don't think he plays next year. And while digging back in time, Edmonton fans chanted for their team to select Shane Doan and that obviously went well. Joaquin Gage also a goaltender of the future leading to speculation Bill Ranford might be traded. And the fans here are yelling, Doan, Doan. They want Shane Doan from Memorial Cup champion Blazers. The Edmonton Oilers are proud to select from Prince Albert Raiders' Steve Kelly. The shouting was for Doan, but it's Steve Kelly, and they get a good one. But Moritz Sider getting taken sixth overall truly shocked everyone, including Sider. As when looking back at all these scouts' rankings and all the YouTuber mock drafts, it was clear no one expected Sider to get selected that high. In April of 2019, the NHL Central Scouting Rankings had Sider ranked 6th amongst all European skaters behind guys such as Victor Soderstrom and Philip Broberg who was ranked 5th. Sider's projections had him being taken anywhere from 15th overall to even in the late 20s. Scouts stated that although he had high-end upside, he's a real boomer bust player. And almost instantly, many began to question Steve Eiserman's decision to take Sider at 6. Eiserman himself had the same doubters when he got taken in the 1983 draft. As after the Wings missed out on LaFontaine, quote, Detroit had to settle for Iserman. Many people were upset that the Wings missed out on LaFontaine, and fast forward to 2019, and people were upset that the Wings missed out on guys such as Trevor Zegris, Cousins, and Broberg. But once the draft was over and Sider played in the AHL and Swedish Hockey League, heads began to once again turn, but in a positive direction, as Sider went from a questionable boomer bust shocker pick to one of the best defensive prospects in the entire NHL. And this season, when he made his NHL debut, Sider once again surprised everyone, posting 50 points as a rookie defenseman looking like a franchise-altering player for Detroit in just his first season. And to top it all off, at the NHL Awards this summer, Sider took home the Calder Trophy, winning Rookie of the Year. Many predicted that the Wings were completely foolish for taking Sider as high as they did, but he proved everyone wrong and has an extremely bright future in Detroit. Ten months ago, we looked back at some of the worst draft predictions in NHL history, and since the the NHL draft is almost upon us, I decided to yet again dive deep in the hockey history and watch as many drafts as I possibly could, going as far back as 1990. I found some crazy predictions and wanted to share them all with you. Like Sider, this next player apparently also had something to prove, as when being selected over a 6'6 defenseman in 2013, many were shocked. The Florida Panthers are proud to select from Tampira, Finland, Alexander Barkov. Well, I'm not saying Barkov won't be a player because he's got the potential to be a very solid player, but to pass on Seth Jones when you're the Florida Panthers and you do not have an overwhelming array of defensive depth, I think this quick will be questioned for a few years until Barkov can prove that he's a home run player. Obviously, Nathan McKinnon was going to be the number one pick. But once Florida was up, as stated by NHL genius Pierre Maguire, many believed they'd go after Seth Jones, and that taking Barkov basically made no sense. Scouts were concerned mainly due to the Panthers' lack of defensive depth, but as also stated, the Panthers found it extremely hard to get the puck in the back of the net thus taking Barkov second overall. Barkov was highly regarded as being a complete package, but because he was taken over Jones and even Jonathan Drouin, the pick was deemed questionable and even caused Don Cherry to go on an absolute rampage. Cherry tweeted out in a four-part Twitter thread, 
quote, Florida's GM Talon, who always said he liked Canadians, drafted a Finn. He said he needed scoring, he could have had Drouin, who won the Memorial Cup and was the leader in scoring over McKinnon. Florida missed out on a two-way player that can score. I hope Dale knows what he's doing. He passed on three guys, Drouin, Nurse, and Jones, who are guaranteed for the NHL for a guy who played last year in the Ice Follies. Okay, there's a lot to break down, because what Alexander Barkov has become makes this entire thread age like milk. First, he mentions how they passed up on both Jonathan Drouin and the big one, Seth Jones. Well, after having three straight 40 plus point seasons from 2016 to 2018, where he'd produced two 53 point seasons, Drouin's production started to drastically decline. And for a guy who was supposed to be drafted as a goal scorer, Drouin ended up becoming more of a setup guy, only having one season where he'd score over 20 goals, scoring 21 goals. And at just 26 years old, Drouin could be headed to his third team due to his contract and yeah, lack of scoring. And as for Seth Jones, he too has faced criticism of his own. Jones has actually been very consistent production-wise, giving his team a chance to win almost every night. Offensively, that is. As Jones is often ridiculed for his lack of defensive awareness, especially over the last few seasons. And at the age of 26, seven, he's already on his third team. Now, back to Barkov. Cherry says Florida missed on a two-way forward. Well, they actually got one of the best two-way forwards in the entire NHL, as Barkov has been praised for having one of the best defensive minds in the entire NHL. Backing it up, by taking home the Selkie Trophy in the 2021 season. And with his ability to light it up offensively with 553 points in 596 games, Barkov has given Florida all the offense they've needed to make their 2013 pick go from questionable to an absolute steal. Oh, and speaking of defensemen, just a year later, the Panthers would get the number one pick and use it to select, you guessed it, a defenseman. We proudly select Aaron Ekblad. Speaking of defensemen, there may be no one more infamous than Adam Larson. Larson would get drafted in the 2011 NHL draft, but was highly regarded as being the best defenseman in that year's draft, and one who could get taken as high as second overall. So when the Devils would select Larson at pick number four, it had many especially Pierre Maguire, yet again, flabbergasted, as he would boldly state, quote, This will be the steal of the draft. At four, this kid is the steal of the draft. Now, that comment isn't as bad as what Bob McKenzie would state, however, as he would state this. He's a more physical defenseman than Victor Hedman. He's not as good a skater as Hedman, but he's probably got better hockey sense and more offensive ability. Wow. Hedman was drafted second overall two years prior by the Tampa Bay Lightning, and knowing what we know now, both analysts were way off. This isn't a knock at Larson by any means, as he is still to this day a very reliable defenseman who can provide some offense. But not as much as he was projected to, and especially not as much as Victor Hedman produces. When comparing the two, Hedman is by far the better offensive player. Larson's best season production-wise was actually this season, where he'd post just 25 points with a plus-minus of minus 23. Larson's 25-point season would count as Hedman's fourth worst productive season, as his 85-point campaign, which he also posted this season, is his best statistical season to date. So that's a 60-point gap between the two when they're on their game. Larson's problem may be simply out of his control, as he had so much hype that it makes him look like a bad player. He just wasn't much of an offensive player, and that's okay. He is still a very solid defender, and that's what defensemen are supposed to do. Just ask Peter Shirelli, because to him, Adam Larson was such a steal that he would give up anything to acquire him. We're going to end today's video hopping back on the hype train, this time for Pavel Brendel. Brendel was heavily praised for his elite goal scoring ability and was thought of as a guy who could completely change a franchise. Teams in need of scoring were dying for someone like Brendel, and the hype at the time was 
kind of deserved. He would score 73 goals with the Calgary Hitmen during the 98-99 season and followed that up with 59 goals the following year. Brendel's ability to find the back of the net was extremely impressive, which caused high praise on draft day. But some analysts may have praised him a bit too much, as this sort of forgotten soundbite made me laugh due to pure shock. A nice big smile. Many compare this young man to Michael Bossy. In case you didn't know, Mike Bossy is one of the greatest goal scorers in NHL history, scoring 60 plus goals in 3 straight seasons and scoring more than 50 for 9 straight seasons. Comparing someone who is yet to play a single game in the NHL to one of the greatest of all time is extremely risky, and as most know, it wasn't even close to being true. Pavel Brendel was exposed as basically a one-trick pony. As his skating was subpar, and besides his lethal shot, everything else was lacking or non-existent. Also factor in Brendel's lack of work ethic and laziness at times, and he looked destined to fail after just a few years in the league. He would play just four seasons in the NHL before bouncing around the AHL, SEL, KHL, Liga, DEL, Swiss, and Czech leagues. While in the NHL, Brendel's goal scoring prowess would have him score 11 whole goals within those four seasons, having a career high five goals in Carolina. Out of all the comparisons and predictions, this has to be up there with some of the worst of all time. But to the Rangers' defense, their drafting at the time was not the greatest, always seeming to struggle with finding talent. Well, the following year, in the 2000 draft, the Rangers got a bit more lucky. They had to wait until the 7th round, but who they took this time did in fact change the franchise, eventually making the Rangers the kings of the Eastern Conference. 